This is section 4.5 about adding and subtracting unlike fractions. We're going to go through the four steps to add or subtract unlike fractions, and we'll do an example as we go through. Our example is 5 twelfths plus 3 tenths. So our first step is to find the LCD of the denominators of our two fractions. Since our denominators are 12 and 10, we want to find the least common multiple of those two numbers to find our LCD. And remember to do this, that we find our prime factorizations. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, and 10 is 2 times 5. And then we write down all the factors from both of those, the most number of times they occur in any one place. So that tells us that our LCD is going to be 2 times 2, since the 2 occurs twice in our prime factorization of 12. Then we have the 3 that occurred once and the 5 that occurred once. And that gives us 60. So our LCD is 60. Now we want to write each fraction as an equivalent fraction whose denominator is that LCD that we just found. We're going to take the 5 twelfths and the 3 tenths, each one, write equivalent fractions for them so that they have denominators of 60. Let's start with the 5 twelfths. Remember when we do this, we want to find the number to multiply the denominator by so that we get the denominator that we want. We want to have a denominator of 60, so we have to think about what we would multiply 12 by to get 60. Well, since 12 times 5 is 60, then 5 is the number that's going to work for us. We're going to take both our numerator and denominator times 5. That gives us on the top 25, and it gives us 60 on the bottom. There's our equivalent fraction for 5 twelfths. Now we want to do the same thing for 3 tenths. We want to write it with a denominator of 60 to get 60, we would have to multiply 10 by 6. That means on the top, we'll multiply also by 6. That will give us 18 sixtieths as our equivalent fraction. Now we'll have two like fractions, and we can add or subtract them, whatever the problem is telling us to do. In this case, we were adding, instead of adding 5 twelfths, plus 3 tenths, now we're adding 25 sixtieths plus 18 sixtieths. Remember when we add or subtract like fractions, we use the denominator that our two fractions had in common. Our denominator will be 60. On the top, we're adding the numerators, so we're adding 25 and 18. If we add those two, we actually get 43. That gives us an answer of 43 sixtieths. Now the last step is to look at the answer that we got in the third step and make sure that it's in simplest form. So our question here is, is 43 sixtieths in simplest form? Well, if we look at the number 43, it's actually prime, so that means it doesn't have any factors in common with 60. So our answer is yes. That means that we can just leave our answer as 43 sixtieths. Let's do some examples of adding or subtracting. And with each one of these, our last step is going to be to check to make sure that our answer is in simplest form. And if it isn't, we'll go ahead and simplify. Let's start out with 1 tenth plus 2 fifths. And again, we want to find our LCD. So let's think about our prime factorizations. 10 is 2 times 5, and 5 is prime. That means that our LCD is just 2 times 5. All right, so that was step 1. For step 2, we want to take each of our fractions and write it with our new LCD. Well, for the first one, the 1 tenth, we don't have to do anything because it already has the denominator we want. For the 2 fifths, we want to write it so that it has a denominator of 10. Well, to get a 10 here, we would have to multiply the 5 by a 2. And that means on the top also we'll be multiplying by 2. And that gives us an equivalent fraction of 4 tenths. Now we can add these. Since we have like fractions, they have the same denominator. That means we're 
just adding the numerators. Remember that we don't add the denominators here. We just use whatever denominator our like fractions had in common. That gives us 5 tenths. Now again, our last step is to make sure that this is in simplest form. If we think about this, since 10 is 2 times 5, we could cancel a 5 out, and we would actually end up with 1 half. So this is our final answer, 1 half. Now let's look at 9 tenths minus 1 seventh. Again, if we factor the 10, we get 2 times 5. 7 is prime, so that means our LCD is going to be 2 times 5 times 7. And if we multiply that out, we get 70. Our next step then is to write each of our fractions so that it has a denominator of 70. If we compare 10 and 70, to get 70 we would have to multiply the 10 by a 7. We're going to use that number both on the top and the bottom so that we get an equivalent fraction of 63 seventieths. Then for the 1 seventh, again we're thinking what we would have to multiply by 7 to get 70. Well that would be 10. That means we're also multiplying by 10 on the top and our equivalent fraction ends up being 10 seventieths. Now we can do our operation with our two like fractions and remember we were subtracting here so we have 63 seventieths minus 10 seventieths. Our denominator will be the same one that these two had in common, which was a 70. On the top, we're subtracting, and that would give us 53 seventieths. Again, our last step is to see whether this is in simplest form. 53 is actually a prime number, so this would be in simplest form. Okay, now let's look at the opposite of 1 fifth plus a negative 2 twenty fifths. Let's start out here by finding our LCD. 5 is prime and 25 factors into 5 times 5. The only factor that we came up with was a 5. It occurred twice here, so we have to write it down twice. That means our LCD is actually 25. For our negative one-fifth, we want to write an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 25. And notice here that I'm just keeping that negative out in front. If it's negative here, then an equivalent fraction would also be negative. But now we want to think about what we have to multiply 5 by to get 25. Well, that would be 5. So we're multiplying by the same number on the top. And that gives us an equivalent fraction of negative 5 25ths. For the negative 2 25ths, that one already has the denominator we want, so we don't have to do anything with that. Now let's look at our operation. And notice what I just did. I took our negative that was in front of our 5 25ths, and I put it up here with the 5 in the numerator. That way we can just look at our denominator of 25 and on the top we have a negative 5 plus a negative 2. If we add those two we end up with negative 7 and if we look at this since negative 7 is prime and 25 only has factors of 5 and 5 then this is already in simplest form. The only thing we might want to do here is put this negative clear out in front of our fraction so that we end up with negative 7 25ths. One more. In this one again we have some negatives that we'll have to deal with but our first step is to find our LCD. Notice that 7 and 2 are both prime so for our LCD we'll actually just have each of those factors once and that gives us an LCD of 14. For our negative 5 sevenths to write it to write an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 14 we would have to multiply the 7 by 2 to get 14. 
So we're multiplying by 2 on the top. Oops, and we still have our negative out in front here. And then on the top we have 10. So our equivalent fraction is negative 10 fourteenths. For the negative 1 over 2, to get 14 we would have to multiply 2 by 7. And that gives us on the top a negative 7. Now we have negative 10 over 14 minus negative 7 over 14. I went ahead and put this negative in the numerator with the 10 in this first fraction. We have like fractions. They both have a denominator of 14. So for our answer, our denominator will be 14. And then we have negative 10 minus a negative 7 for our numerator. Now remember that if we have a subtraction like this, we can always rewrite it as addition. We can rewrite it as the addition of the opposite. Well, since the opposite of negative 7 is 7, this would be the same as negative 10 plus 7 over 14. Again, if you see two negatives in a row like this, you can think about it as them just canceling each other out and turning into a plus. If we add negative 10 and 7, we get a negative 3. That gives us an answer of negative 3 fourteenths. Since 3 is prime and the factors of, of 14 are 2 and 7, there's nothing in common and this would be in simplest form. Again, if we wanted to, we could pull that negative all the way out in front. So that gives us negative 3 fourteenths. Here's some more examples. These ones are a little bit more complicated as far as finding the LCD. In this first one, we have 3 25ths plus 1 15th. For our LCD, we're doing our prime factorizations. 25 is 5 times 5, and 15 is 3 times 5. So for our LCD, we have a 5 that occurs twice here, so we have to write it down twice. Then our 3 only occurs once. So we only write that one down once. And that gives us an LCD of 75. Now we're taking each of our fractions and rewriting it with the LCD we just found of 75. So if we have 75, to get that, we'd have to multiply 25 by 3. And remember that whatever number we're multiplying in the denominator, we always have to multiply that same number in the numerator. That's how we get our equivalent fractions. That gives us an equivalent fraction of 9 75ths. For the 1 15th, to get 75, we would have to multiply 15 by 5. We're multiplying that same number on the top, and that gives us 5. If you're having trouble figuring out what number to multiply by to get your LCD, you can always divide. So to figure this out, we could have taken 75 and divided by 15, and that would have given us 5. Now we have 9 75 plus 5 75. We just substituted each of our original fractions with their equivalent fraction that we found. We're going to use 75 as our denominator. And on the top we have 9 plus 5, which is 14. Now let's check and make sure whether this is in simplest form or not. So 14 is 2 times 7. And we actually already have our prime factorization of 75 back here. So 3 times 5 times 5, well, out of all those factors, there is nothing in common. That means that this is in simplest form. Okay, now let's look at 7 ninths minus 1 twelfth. For 9, we would get 3 times 3.
for 12, we would get 2 times 2 times 3. And that means for our LCD, if we look at our factor of 3, it occurred there twice. So we have to write it down twice. And the 2 occurred twice here in the 12. So we have to write that one down twice also. If we multiply this out, 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 would give us 36. So that's our LCD. Now 7 ninths. If we write an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 36, to get 36, we'd multiply 9 by 4. So we're multiplying that same number on the top, which gives us 28. And for the 1 12th, to get 36, we'd have to multiply 12 by 3. And that gives us an equivalent fraction of 3 36. Now we have 28 36, and let's look back at our problem. Our operation here was a minus. So we have 28 36 minus 3 36. And our denominator, remember, is 36 because it's the same one that these two had in common. That gives us 25 36. And again, let's check and make sure that this is in simplest form. If we write our prime factorizations, and again, you can always go back with this with your LCD because you should already have a prime factorization. We know 36 from back here was 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. And again, we don't have any factors in common between the numerator and denominator, which means that this is in simplest form. Okay, one more. In this one, we have three different fractions, so we're going to have to find the LCD of all three of these at the same time. Let's look at our prime factorizations. For 5, we just have 5. 20 is 4 times 5, and that gives us 2 times 2 times 5 for our prime factorization. 16 is 4 times 4. If we break those down, we get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So now for our LCD, we're looking at all three of these prime factorizations and picking out all the factors. First, we had a 5. It occurs in both of these fractions, but in each one it only occurs once, so we only write it down once. Then for the 2, it occurs twice here, but it occurs four times in our prime factorization of 16. That means we have to write down four factors of 2 for our LCD. Now if we multiply all this out, we're going to get 80. That's our LCD. Now we're looking at each of our three fractions and what would be an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 80. Starting with the negative 7 fifths, we want to know what we'd multiply 5 by to get 80. And there are a couple of different ways you can figure this out. One is just to do the division. Five goes into 36 times, so that means to get 80, we'd have to multiply 5 by 16. That means we're also multiplying on in our numerator by 16, and 7 times 16 is going to give us 112. And we do still have the negative out there too. Our equivalent fraction is negative 112 over 80. Okay, now for the 3 20ths, this one's a little bit easier to figure out what number to multiply by. To get 80, you'd have to multiply 20 by 4. That means also multiplying on the top by 4. So our equivalent fraction there is 12 80ths. And finally, with the 12 16ths, now this one, if we look back at our first fraction, we already found out that 5 times 16 is equal to 80. 
So here we'd have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 5. And that gives us 60 on the top, or an equivalent fraction of 60 80ths. Okay, so now we have our first fraction, which was 112 80ths, minus our second one, which is 12 80ths, plus our third one, which is 60 80ths. And again, we're going to use the denominator that we have in common between all these, all three of these, which gives us a denominator of 80. On the top, we have negative 112 minus 12 plus 60. Now we just have to do the operations on the top. If we have negative 112 minus 12, this would be the same as plus a negative 12, and that would give us negative 124. Negative 124 plus 60 will give us negative 64. Now, our last step is to check and see whether this fraction is in simplest form. So let's think about our prime factorization of 64. Okay, so we end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then on the bottom, we already have our prime factorization for 80 back here. And now we have four different sets of 2's that we can cancel out. There's 1, there's 2, there's 3, and there's 4. That leaves us on the top with negative 2 times 2, so negative 4, and it leaves us with a 5 on the bottom. We reduced our negative 64 80ths, our negative 64 80ths down to negative 4 fifths. And again, if we want to, we can leave the negative up here with the 4, or we could write it out in front of our fraction. Another thing we can do by using a least common denominator is to help compare fractions. For example, if we have 3 fifths and 4 sevenths, it's a little bit hard to tell which one of those is the smaller of the two. And that's especially hard because they don't have the same denominators. If we had like fractions here, then all we would have to do would be to compare the numerators and we would know which one was less and which one was greater. So that's exactly what we're going to do. First, we're going to find the LCD of 3 fifths and 4 sevenths. Well, since 5 and 7 are both prime, then our LCD will just multiply those two together and get 35. Now we're going to take each one of these two and write an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 35. For 3 fifths, to get 35, we'd have to multiply 5 by 7. Multiplying both the top and the bottom by 7, which gives us 21 on the top. And for 4 sevenths, we'd multiply the 7 by 5 to get 35. And that gives us on the top 4 times 5, which is 20. So now instead of 3 fifths and 4 sevenths, we're comparing 21 30 fifths and 20 30 fifths. And when we compare these, since they have the same denominator, we can just compare the numerators. This means that we have the same number of equal parts in each one, but notice that the one on the left has more parts that would be shaded because it has 21 instead of 7, 21 instead of 20. That means that this one on the left would be greater than the one on the right. 
and that means that we would put the greater than symbol in here. And remember again that our inequality symbol is always going to point to the smaller of the two numbers, and if we're just comparing the numerators, 20 is smaller than 21. Let's do the same thing with 2 thirds and 3 fourths. So our first step is to look at this and see that we have unlike fractions. In order to do a comparison, we really need to have these be like fractions. So let's find our LCD. 3 is prime, and 4 is 2 times 2. So for our LCD, we would have 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. We're going to write an equivalent fraction for each one of these with a denominator of 12. So 2 thirds to get 12, we'd have to multiply 3 by 4. That means we're also multiplying in the numerator by 4, and that gives us 8. For 3 fourths, we'd have to multiply 4 by 3 to get 12. That means we're multiplying in the numerator by 3 also, and that gives us 9 twelfths. So now for our comparison, instead of 2 thirds and 3 fourths, we now have our equivalent fraction for 2 thirds, which was 8 twelfths, our equivalent fraction for 3 fourths, which was 9 twelfths. Since we have the same denominator, we can just compare the numerators, and we can see that 8 is less than 9. So the symbol that would go in here would be a less than. Now we can also evaluate expressions with replacement values. For this one, let's evaluate both x plus y and x minus y if we have these replacement values, that x is equal to 2 thirds and y is equal to 3 fourths. So for the x plus y, we're still using our parentheses. If we replace the x with 2 thirds, then 2 thirds goes in this parentheses and our y was 3 fourths. So that goes there. Now all we're doing is adding 2 thirds and 3 fourths. Again, we have to get a common denominator. We just saw on the last slide that our LCD for these two is 12. And actually we did some of the rest of the work here too. To write an equivalent fraction for 2 thirds that has a denominator of 12, we'd have to multiply both the top and the bottom by 4. So we get 8 twelfths for that. And for 3 fourths, we're multiplying both the top and the bottom by 3. That gives us 9 twelfths. This means that 2 thirds plus 3 fourths is the same as 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. Then we have the same denominator in both. That means our new denominator is 12, and on the top we're just adding 8 and 9. That gives us 17 twelfths. Since 17 is prime, then this is in simplest form. Now let's do the x minus y. Again, we're replacing the x with the 2 thirds, and we're replacing the y with the 3 fourths. Once we've done that, we can really just take off those parentheses. Now we've already figured out our LCD, and we've already figured out our equivalent fractions for both of these. So we can just go ahead and write this part down. Now we have 8 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. Our denominator will be 12, and on the top we're taking 8 and subtracting 9. That is going to give us a negative 1. Now obviously since 1 doesn't have any factors except itself, then this is in simplest form. So we'd have negative 1 12. Now let's do a word problem example. If we have a long distance relay race, the first leg is 1 half of a kilometer, and the other three legs are each 1 fourth of a kilometer. What is the total distance run in the race? Well, remember what total means. This is a signal to add. Our first leg is 1 half. And the other three legs are each 1 fourth. So that means the second leg is 1 fourth. The third leg is 1 fourth. 
and the fourth leg is one fourth. We want the total of all four of those legs. That means we're adding one half plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Now these three all have the same denominator, but the one half doesn't, so we do need to find an LCD. If we think about our prime factorization of four, our two is prime, so we don't need to worry about that. Four is two times two. That means our LCD is two times two or four. That means the only one of these that we'll, we'll have to change is this one. So if we want to write one half with the denominator of four, we'd have to multiply a numerator and denominator by two. That gives us an equivalent fraction of two fourths. So now we have two fourths plus one fourth plus one fourth. And our new denominator will be four. It's the same number that all these denominators have in common. In our numerator, we just have two plus one plus one plus one. If we add all those up, that's going to give us five. Five fourths is in lowest terms since there's nothing, no factors that five and four have in common. So this would be our answer. The total distance is going to be five fourths of a kilometer.